Welcome to Power BI Tutorials. As a report consumer, this demo will show you how to use and navigate around a Power BI report. For this demo, I've created a simple report based on England and Wales birth data. Now, I'm sure this is not going to be identical to the report you're using, but as this tutorial covers the standard Power BI functionality, you should be able to follow along using any Power BI report. On the left here, we have the navigation panel. This panel lists all the reports and dashboards available in the Power BI app that's been shared with you. My app only has one report, so here in the navigation panel, you can only see the one report and its page names. This report has two pages. Just click on the page name to navigate to it. Some reports will have the page names displayed as tabs here at the bottom of the report instead of in the navigation panel. This report also has navigation buttons at the top of the page. So on this page, I have a back button that takes me back to the first page of the report. And on the first page, I have a button that takes me to the second page. Not all reports will have these. But as my report does have navigation buttons, I'm going to minimise the navigation panel. One of the first things you'll notice about Power BI reports is that as you move your cursor over elements of some visualisations, a pop-up window appears with additional information in it. This is called a tooltip. The report author decides what goes in the tooltips, and for this report I've just added some basic stats. So for example, if I hover over this element of the births by gender chart, you can see that I've added into the tooltips the value for male births as well as the value for total births. Some reports may also have a chart as a tooltip, but I haven't set this up here. The majority of reports will have ways you can filter the data shown. And for this report, you can filter by year using this slicer. So if I scroll down to 2018 and tick it on, the chart changed to show data for 2018. And I can see that Oliver is the most popular name in this year. I'll scroll up and instead select the year 2000. And you can see that the most popular name then is Jack. To go back to selecting all years, I can either click on select all or unselect the year 2000. Now this slicer also allows you to select multiple years. So I'll tick on the year 2018, hold down the control button on the keyboard, and then select 2017 and 2016. Then the report shows data for all those years combined. Sometimes it is a bit difficult to see which filters have been switched on. So if any time you get confused, you can go up to the reset to default at the top of the page and click to reset the report back to how it was when you first opened it. Most of the time, the charts themselves can also be used as filters. So for example, if I select the year 2010 on this chart, it will change the data in the report to show 2010 values. And similar to the slicer, you can hold down the control key on your keyboard to select multiple years. If you want to unselect, just click anywhere on the background of the chart. Some reports like this one will also have a filter panel on the right hand side of the screen. So you select the arrow button to view it and you can see that this has a filter for year. So you can say show items when the year is, I'm going to select greater than 2015 and then you select apply filter. You can then see that the report has changed to show data after 2015 and also notice that the slicer has also been filtered. Now I'm going to go back to the original state of the report by selecting reset to default.
You'll notice that as you move your cursor over visualizations, a range of buttons appear at the top. The first one I'm going to show you is called focus mode, which is this button here. Click on it and it will expand the visualization to fill the screen. To return to report, just click on back to report. This is particularly useful for visualizations like this one here. It's quite small and not all labels are shown. When I click on focus mode, you can see now the label is displayed for this section here. While you're in focus mode, you can go up to the three dots on the right here and select show as table. This opens up a table of the data used in the visualization. You can use this button here to switch to a vertical view of the table and again back to report to return. The next button that appears on the visualization is the filter button. You just hover your cursor over it and it will tell you which filters or slices affect the visual. Now at the moment we don't have any switched on but if I go across and tick on the year 2018 go back to the visual, hover over the filter button, and it tells me the data for the visualization is filtered by the year 2018. The next button along is the copy visual as image. Click on it and the visualization will be copied to your clipboard. So from here you can paste it into another document such as a presentation. Finally, you have the button on the far right, which reveals more options. Click on it and a drop down menu appears and I'm going to select show as a table. This opens up the visualization in focus mode and gives you a table of all the data from the visualization. Because we have a filter on, it's only given me data for 2018. But if I go back to the report, take off the filter, and then go back to show as a table, now it opens up with all of the data showing. You'll notice that as I move my cursor over this births by year chart, a set of arrows appear at the top here. Now these buttons are used to drill down into your data. These tools will only appear if your data has a hierarchy associated with it. A hierarchy is different layers of related data, and the calendar is the most common example of this, where you have data available by year, month, and sometimes day. Other examples could be an organisational structure, so you could have an executive department, teams within that department, and then individuals within the team. This chart only has two levels, year and month. As we're at the top level of the hierarchy, the first button is greyed out. The second button allows you to drill down into your data. So click on it to turn the drill down on, and I want to explore the data in 2010. So I'll left click on the 2010 column as you can see, it now displays births per month for the year 2010. The first button is now available, so you can click on it and go back up to the year level. The drill down is still on, so if I click on, say, the year 2000, it will drill down and show you the births per month for that year. If your data has another level, so say we have births by day data, you could then click on month to view day level data. But I don't have that data in this report, so I will click on the first button to go back up to the year data. You have to click on this button again to turn off the drill down functionality. And now I'll move along to the next drill down button. So the third button along will take you to the next level in the hierarchy for all the data on the chart. To demonstrate, I'll click on the button and you can see that the charts now displays the total number of births per month for all the years combined. And if I go to focus mode, the data label should appear so you can see that there were 1.08 million births in May. 
I'll go back to the report and drill up to the year level. Finally, if I click on the last drill down button, you can see it also takes you down to the next level of the hierarchy. But this time it displays one column per month per year. And if I go to focus mode, we get a clearer view of this. So you can see there's a lot of data as you'll have 12 columns per year. Notice that while in focus mode, the drill down buttons are available. So I can drill back up while still in focus mode. Some reports also have drill through functionality enabled. You'll know if this is available on your reports because as you hover over elements of a chart, it will tell you to right click and drill through. So to demo this, I'm going to right click on 2015, select drill through and year details. Now a report specifically for 2015 opens. And here it has births by month in a chart and table. But it could show top 10 baby names, for example. So any related data. You click on the button at the top of the page to go back to the report page. Another useful tool is the Spotlight tool. Hover over any visualisation, click on the three dots, and select Spotlight. This grays out the background of the report to highlight the visualization. And I find this particularly useful if you're using the report in a presentation. Just click anywhere on the report to turn off the spotlights. Finally, I'm going to show you some of the options available from the menus at the top of the report. Which menus appear here are dependent on what's been switched on by the Power BI admins. So I'll just walk you through some of the basic ones. I'm going to navigate to the second page of the report for this part of the demo and then go across to the first menu, which is the export menu. So if I click on export, we have three options, export to PowerPoint, PDF, or direct to print. I'm going to select PDF and here we have a few options. We can either export with the current value selected in the report. So if you have any filters switched on, the data will be shown for these filters in the export. Or you can export it with the default values. So I'm going to select default values. I'm going to keep this tick box on to exclude any hidden report tabs. And I'm not going to select only export current page as I want to export both report pages. Next, I click on export. And as this message indicates here, it does take a while to export to PDF. So I'm going to fast forward this part of the demo. Here's the exported PDF, which I'll click on to open, and you can see that it is an exact replica of the Power BI report. It just doesn't have any of the interactive features. And as you can see, both report pages have been exported. Now, as I'm not a big fan of PDF versions of Power BI, I'm going to quickly switch back to the Power BI report window. Next, I'm going to show you the bookmarks menu. This is where you can capture the current state of the report and save it as a bookmark. So for demo purposes, I'm going to select all years from 2000 to 2014 using the slider slicer and then go up to the bookmarks menu and add personal bookmark. We need to give it a sensible name so I'm going to put 2000 to 2014 and save. So if I reset the report back to default, then I can go up to the bookmarks menu and select the bookmark we've just saved. 
it will automatically then set the report to show data from 2000 to 2014. Finally, you have the view menu here on the right, where you can select full screen to expand the report to fill the screen. You can select fit to page, fit to width, etc. You can also change the colors used in the report. So if the default colors are not clear for your eyesight, you can select some high contrast colors. I'm going to select number two, and for some people, this may be easier to read than the default colours of the report. I'll just go back to the view menu and select none to go back to the original colours. And that's the end of this tutorial. The main thing to remember when you're using Power BI reports is that you can't break them. So if you get confused, not sure what you've clicked on, you can always use the reset to default button to get back to the original report view.